go ahead and start. This webinar is going to be recorded. So if you are aware of a colleague of yours that just wasn't able to make it uh, in time, you don't have to be burdened with uh, telling them verbatim everything that you're about to learn. You can just point them to the recording that we'll be sharing after. Uh, so once again, the webinar here today is Attendee Self-Service with the Soapbox Engage Events app. Uh, my name is Tim Forbes. I'm the VP of Products and Client Success here at Soapbox Engage. And I must say we are very excited about this new functionality that we are going to be sharing with you because it uh, is going to be quite powerful and we think quite useful for you in pursuing your mission uh, and in getting the information that you need from folks who are your more, most ardent supporters, those that come to uh, your events, particularly ones like uh, say end of the year galas that you all might be thinking about right now. And uh, we, we trust that the functionality that we're gonna be walking through will prove useful to, uh, to you in managing those events. What I do want to share just from the top is we do have a uh, brand new section of our knowledge base uh, to which we've added nine new articles. Uh, the tenth one in this list here is in a different section of our knowledge base, but it is relevant as well. I am going to go ahead and just toss in the link to this announcement. Um, this announcement was one that you probably saw earlier. We've just updated it with uh, these links. And what uh, I'll be doing is referring to some of these articles as we go through our webinar today so that you can know where to go for step-by-step -step instructions for how to do what we're going to show you um, in this webinar. So first, Things first. What are we talking about when we're talking about attendee self-service? Or we could broaden this to event orderers and attendee self-service. What we are meaning is that when you have uh, an, uh, an event that you hold and uh, get registrations through Soapbox, and folks come and register for your events by putting in their contact information and then uh, providing how many tickets they want to purchase and then potentially uh, details of those attendees. What we're going to be referring to is how you can allow folks who order uh, through the Subux Engage events app, how you can allow them access to view all of the orders that they've placed with you as a logged in user, and how you can let those orderers view individual tickets, edit those individual tickets, and then share links to those individual tickets to other folks that they want to use uh, those tickets to attend your event so that they also can view details of a ticket and edit uh, various details of that ticket that you choose to give them access to. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. And what we wanna do is highlight the various front end user experience pieces first. So you get a sense of how in this world, how in the world this all works. And then we can dive into the specific setup steps that you have within the Subbox Engage administrator. One thing to point out is that the functionality that we're going to be walking through is relevant whether or not you choose to have the event registration attendee information form displayed here. So in some cases, you may want to get or allow folks to provide you information about each attendee at the point of registration. Other times you may not want to. You may wanna say, hey, we're gonna go ahead and just ask for the number of tickets that folks want. And we won't even show the attendee information form at all. Either approach is fine you can uh, choose either option and still have the ability to use the attendee self-service options that we'll show so that folks can provide 
details of each attendee uh, to you later on. So how do folks get to see, first off, their orders with you all? So we're going to start with the logged in user experience. Um, one thing that we should note is that this functionality for viewing uh, the attendee information and the orders uh, for a given orderer um, assumes that you have the portal add-on so that you allow folks the front end user experience of logging into their own account for a personalized uh, user experience. One way that folks can access their list of uh, orders that they've placed with you is just through a, uh, an event that you have set up. So if we scroll down on this example event, for those who are familiar with our events app, you'll notice we've got the ticket table here on this event detail page. We have this attend this event button. We all also have this brand new thing that is a manage my tickets button. This is something that as we'll see later on can be turned on or off on, a, on an event by event basis. In this particular case for this gala event, we've chosen to enable it. So that's why it's appearing here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that button. Because I'm already logged in, I'm taken to this My Event Orders view. If I were not logged in already, I would be prompted to log, uh, to log in, and then I would be sent to this page. So here's our first glimpse at the new functionality. This uh, My Event Orders view is something that requires a couple steps to create. Uh, first is you create a menu item in the system. This is essentially just allowing you the ability to define what the URL is that folks will access when they come to this page. In this case, it's just uh, My Event Orders. And we've got details for how you can create a menu item in those knowledge base articles that I posted uh, the, the summary link to in the chat. So it presupposes that you have an event, um, a My Event Orders URL that you've created, and that you've associated that with the events app in the configuration for events. And we'll take a peek at that later on. So we're logged in here. We've got the My Event Orders up. We have just one and only one event that we've placed an order for uh, as this logged in user. It happens to be the event that we were just looking at, Giving Tuesday Dinner and Gala Auction. You can see that we placed this order just today. We're extremely excited about attending this event. We say that the start date for the event is November 28th and that we have five tickets that we've registered for this event. Now from here, as a logged in user, we can go ahead and click that link and it takes us to the detail view of our order. So we get to see again, the event name, the event date, the event time, the order ID, that's a unique ID um, for identifying what order this is. Again, we get to see the order date and time and the amount of the order. And then below, we get to see all of the tickets that we have registered for. You'll see a mix of tickets that have information and tickets that don't have information. So where a ticket holder name is absent, we just have the default no name provided. If we have the name of a ticket holder, like for Snookums Penguin, uh, that appears there under ticket holder. Then we see the type of ticket. In this case, this event has one and only one type. So all of these are gala dinner tickets. We get to see the price of that ticket. And then in this other column next to price, missing required info, we have just a simple yes or no. What's happening here is that within the self-service options set up for a given events, not only can you determine whether or not you want somebody to be able to edit tickets, you can also set on a field by field basis, what information is required 
that they provide to you before the event is held. So you may have a use case where you're not asking for any attendee information when they first register and that your, uh, your strategy is that you're going to get them to provide that information for you at a later date. So you don't need to set any of the fields as required at the outset, but in this case, you do need to have this information in certain fields provided before the event itself. So what this is noting to you is which tickets or actually noting to the logged in orderer, uh, which tickets have all of their required information filled out. In this case, Phil Penguin and Sally Penguin have provided all of their information that is required. And then uh, also showing you which tickets still need information. So those would be for the no name provided tickets and then the Snookums Penguin ticket. Now, we can go ahead and drill down to see the full details of a ticket just by clicking View. So if we do that, we get to see more of the event information so we can be assured that the ticket that we're looking at is indeed the one that we intended to open. We get to see the information that uh, we've provided here for same last name email address. And then to note after the, the standard fields that we have for same last name email, et cetera, we have this field down at the bottom, meal preference pescatarian. Not surprising that Phil Penguin would be a pescatarian. This um, is a custom field that was added to the event, and we'll see this uh, in detail when we get into the administrator. It happens to be a custom field that is integrated with our uh, Microsoft Dynamics uh, solution so that these values were written to Microsoft Dynamics. Um, the same thing would be true for Salesforce custom fields if your Subbox Engage instance integrates with Salesforce. So we don't want to just look at the ticket. We want to go ahead and edit this ticket. So we'll go ahead and click Edit. On the Edit view, we get to see the information that we've already provided and we can change that if we wish. So let's go ahead and say that Phil has decided to become a vegan. So we'll go ahead and save that. And that will update the system so that uh, Phil's ticket is now associated with the option of vegan. If we were to go ahead and go back to our event detail view, we could go to these other individuals, click edit right from the, the my event order detail view if we wish. We don't need to see the ticket detail view in order to edit it. And we could go ahead and enter the information that we want here. Now, this is all for the event orderer. They get these views of the My Event Orders, so they can see all of the orders that they've ever placed. Specifically, what's going on behind the scenes there is any event order that is uh, associated with the email of the logged in user will be displayed. So even if you've been using Subbox events for years and years and years, and you haven't had uh, the portal experience where folks are logging into the front end, you can still have the My Event Orders view available and displaying relevant information to folks when they log, log in based on that email matching. So, the logged in event orderer can see that my event orders view that lists all of the event orders. They can see this my order view of an individual order. They can drill down to a ticket. And from here, if they wish, they can go ahead and take the URL for this okay, view. They can go ahead and take the URL for this ticket view and send it to any individual that they would like to fill out this ticket. So if they have um, individuals that they that they have uh, that they want to have attend this event, um, 
by sending them this link for this ticket, if you've allowed access to ticket holders or anonymous users to view a ticket and edit a ticket, they would be able to do just that. So an individual who is the orderer could share these, most likely, most likely the email with the individuals that they want to complete the details on this ticket so they can provide first name, last name, email address, uh, meal preference, et cetera. And then that individual would be able to view it just like the orderer could. They wouldn't have access to the my order view or the my uh, event orders view, because those are just available for the logged in user. But as a front end anonymous user, they'd be able to view a ticket and edit a ticket if you've granted them access. So we've been noting a number of times uh, about different parameters, things that you can decide to do or not do um, to grant access or restrict access. And I've promised that we would look at the administrator to show you how that is all done. So we are logged into the administrator for this Subbox Engage training account. And we'll show you a few things first. Uh, First, we'll go to the events configuration. And on the configuration view, we have a My Tickets tab. If we click on that, this is where you can go ahead and select which menu item that you created should be used for the My Orders page. And again, you can feel free to review the link that we shared in, uh, in the chat that has the links to all the different new knowledge base articles. So that'll walk you through both how to create the menu item for the My Event Orders view, and then how to associate it uh, here uh, with the events app, um, My Orders page. In addition, you've got the ability to customize uh, a few other things. So you can customize the title of the My Orders page. You can add in some intro and outro text on that page. And then the same is true for those individual My Order detail pages. So you can set the page title for My Order, and then again, set the intro and outro. And then lastly, you've got the ability to set the detail page title for the My Ticket view and the My Ticket edit page title. So all of those, um, are open for you to edit if you don't like the default values or if you want to provide some additional information in the intro and outro for those pages. Now, the bulk of the settings that we have that control the user experience for an event are on the individual event pages. So if we go ahead and search for the events that we were using, as our demo, we can go ahead and open up the edit view of this Giving Tuesday dinner and auction gala. And first things first, if we click the edit tab, we can scroll down to the self-service option. And here is where we can determine a number of things. First and foremost, whether or not folks can edit the tickets at all. Um, if you want, you can have things set up so that you create the menu item for the My Event Orders and just leave it at that. Just have a way that logged in users can go and view what they've registered for. You don't need to give them edit access to anything. In this case, we've decided to give edit access to orderers of these tickets. So again, it's the tickets that we're providing edit access to, not any other details in the order. So they can't go in and just decide, oh, the amount that is required to pay for this order is half of what it, uh, what it should be. It's just the ticket values. In addition to uh, granting access to edit tickets by the orderers, you can also grant access uh, for editing tickets to ticket holders. And again, ticket holders here, we're just defining as anonymous users that come to that 
uh, ticket detail page that the order has sent them to. So if we go ahead and say yes here, then any anonymous user that opens that my ticket page will be able to uh, edit that information. If we set this to no, then they would just be able to view it if they had the URL that was sent to them by the orderer. Ticket edit deadline. This is uh, a feature where you can restrict editing after a certain date. So for our gala, we have it scheduled for the 28th of November. And let's say that we know we need to let the caterer, caterer know by the 25th of November who has which meal choices. So in that case, we wanna go ahead and set the ticket edit deadline for the 24th so that we know when the 25th comes, we're gonna be able to send that list of meal preferences to the caterer and not have somebody go back in and edit something um, that, uh, that we don't want them to edit. The next parameter here, display tickets management button. This refers to that button that was on the event detail page that we saw. So manage my tickets. If you want to allow folks to edit their tickets and do so via the My Event Orders uh, menu item, you can do that and choose to not have this button displayed. If you want to make things easy on folks who you know will be coming to the event detail page so that they can easily use that as the place where they can log in and view their registrations. Um, you can go ahead and enable that here. And we've given you the option, like so many other places in Soapbox, to customize the language of that button. So we see what are we allowing, uh, or whether or not we're allowing folks to edit the tickets related to a given order for this event, um, whether that's the uh, logged in orderers or the anonymous ticket holders. What about on a field by field basis? And what about that required before event option? So if we go to the attendee info tab, this is where we see all of the fields that uh, are enabled and associated with this event. The first group of fields, standard fields, is where we have all of our usual suspects, first name, last name, email address, et cetera. You'll see that on the front end login form, we've enabled first name, last name, email address. We're not requiring that right now because we want to, folks, we want to allow folks to submit their registration without giving us that information at the time of registration. But then we have required before event ticked off so that we can alert them in that view um, for the My Event Order Detail page, which tickets are fully um, populated with information that's required before the event and which aren't. So that is the flag here on the standard fields. For custom fields, if you remember, we had a custom field here for meal preference that happens to write to Microsoft Dynamics. We can come down and see this field. Again, it's published, it's not required. If we click the Edit button, we get to view details about this field. We can change those as we like. Uh, we've also got the same option here for required before event. We've set that to yes. And then further down, we've got some additional options for any custom field that integrates with uh, either Microsoft or Salesforce. And those get more specific about who can do what. So allow orderers to view in portal, yes or no. Allow orders to edit in portal, yes or no. And then the same is true for ticket holders or again, anonymous users to either view or edit. So if you wanted, you could have it so that these fields are included on the initial registration form, but not even visible to either logged in orderers or ticket holders on the My Events uh, uh, order detail view. 
Um, we've set them to visible to both parties and also editable. But again, you could elect to have them visible and not editable or editable, say, just by the orderer uh, and have it so that individual ticket holders can't edit those values. So you've got a number of different options there. By contrast, the standard fields, if they are shown, will be displayed and editable uh, to folks on the My uh, Ticket view. Um, at this time, there's not the option to set these as not editable. Um, that is just uh, following whatever parameter you've chosen for the edit access to the event tickets writ large on that first view that we saw. One other thing to note uh, before we close things out here is that with these um, different ways of being able to edit tickets, you can edit tickets in the administrator uh, as an administrator, you can have orders editing tickets on the front end. You can have anonymous users editing tickets on the front end. We wanted to make sure that you had a way to uh, determine who edited uh, a given ticket and when it was last edited. So if you want to find out that detail for a given ticket, you can go into orders. You can open the order in question. You can scroll down to the ticket information section and then go ahead and click view to see the details of a given ticket. And if it's been edited, you'll see that noted here under last modified and last modified, modified by. So if we were to go ahead and click edit and we change this name and click save and refresh, then we see that this was modified today by us, the administrator. One thing to note about the, uh, the edits that are made to given tickets. At this time, those edits are recorded just in Soapbox. So if you have an integration that is set up with either Microsoft or Salesforce as your CRM, any changes that are made either by the administrator, by you, or by front end users to, to ticket details will be saved just locally to Soapbox. Um, they won't be sent to Microsoft or Salesforce. You do have the option of exporting those values just by going to uh, the events add edit view, you can go to the reservations tab and you can export attendees. You can also do this from the orders uh, view as well. And from there, you can have uh, that be the list that you that you use um, to send to your caterer or to print out before you go to the event or to go ahead and upload those changes into your CRM for those individual tickets and ticket holders. That is our webinar for today. Uh, a couple things to note is we do have another bit of functionality that's going to be added uh, in short order. That is the ability to cancel uh, a ticket. Um, that will be uh, posted to our community announcement board uh, for Subbox Engage updates when it is live. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And just in case uh, you hadn't seen this yet, um, we're actually in, in this webinar today uh, using some, some of the newest functionality uh, that we have in the events app, um, which is the ability to track attendance. So for um, those who have Zoom integration for events like we have for our Soapbox Engage uh, site, uh, we did just release the ability to track attendance and have that attendance recorded in uh, Soapbox. So you can see which of your registrants um, came to the webinar and um, details on how long they stayed as well. So if that is of interest to you at all, um, feel free to go ahead and check out our knowledge base. We've got new articles there about attendance tracking. 
thanks so much for your time and attention. If you've got any questions uh, about this functionality, feel free to open up a support ticket. Uh, if you don't have our events app or you don't have our portals functionality and you're interested, feel free to reach out. We'd love to chat with you and uh, have a fantastic day.